So I am very happy guys because we almost have 100 likes to the prepare for the CCHI video. What does almost 100 likes mean? It means that we have 90 likes, we have uh, 10 likes to go and that's why I want to ask, will you be my 100? Come on, think about it. So will you be my, my, my 100 or not? Come on, we gotta do this guys. I told you guys we're gonna get this by Wednesday. I'm pretty sure that we are gonna get it by Wednesday. I am more than convinced that we're gonna get it by Wednesday. I'm gonna get vaccinated on Wednesday, so yeah. A vaccine and 100 likes, what else can a man wish for, right? So let's do it, let's make it happen. And if I'm dying from the vaccine, Pfizer, by the way, if I'm dying from the Pfizer vaccine, the second Pfizer vaccine, which I'll be completely vaccinated, then that way I can at least have uh, some consolation in knowing that we reached the 100 likes. So let's do it, guys. Come on. I know that we can do it. I'm pretty sure that we can do it. Why are we trying to get those 100 likes to the MIP? Uh, I'm sorry, why are we trying to get those 100 likes to the prepare for the CCHI? Because once we do, once somebody accepts to being my 100, what is going to happen? We're going to post MIP21 to YouTube, which is already on Patreon. You can see it for as little as just $1 of your support. And we give you all kinds of good awesome stuff that is going to help you to become a better interpreter so that's not all so we're gonna post MIP 21 to YouTube and we're gonna give everyone a chance to comment on MIP 21 once after some time we're gonna let we're gonna pick two comments at random we're gonna pick the two people who those two comments belong to we're gonna send them exclusive links to MIP 22 we're gonna let them go ahead and send in their in recorded interpretations to us that way we can go ahead and give them some feedback so let's get to it guys this this is crazy will you be by 100 please accept say yes let's get to those 100 likes so we can get the mip 21 and we can get the ball rolling with those feedbacks all right so let's do it guys let's do it so let's get started today hello and welcome to unwind sessions where right after my shift i give the highlights of my workday and answer any questions that might have been asked at a previous session my name is juan i am an english spanish medical video remote consecutive interpreter with over four years of experience today is monday august 23rd 2021 and i took a total of 40 sessions it was like always a mix between audio and video sessions but today there were there were a little bit more audio sessions than what normally happens so no complaint there right and i do i do have uh, three highlights today which i would like to mention the first one the first one is actually a term and the term is right here it's cre bacteria Bacteria ERC in Spanish and CRE stands for something very complicated um, Carbapenem resistance Enterobacteria or something like that um, I heard it right now and it say a Enterobacteria or something like that Enterobacteria I'm pretty sure that was it. And in Spanish is Enterobactericeae resistente a la carvapema or ERC. So pretty hard word right there, that Enterobactericeae. I'm pretty sure that's how it is, CA. Um, so yeah, but the good thing is we don't have to remember that, right? We just have to remember CRE bacteria or in Spanish bacteria ERC. And what is this? These are strains of bacteria that are resistant to an antibiotic class, Carpobenum, 
used to treat severe infections. CRE are also resistant to most other commonly used antibiotic and in some cases to all available antibiotics. Now, um, I'm just giving you this as information. This is the first time that I've ever come across this in four years. I would suggest that you probably write it down, keep it in the back of your head just so that you remember it. Um, and if you can remember it, that it's bacteria, bacteria ERC in Spanish, so CRE bacteria, that'll be good. And uh, there were four, um, pen uh, not penicillin, antibiotic resistant bacteria that were mentioned today and that was just one of them. And, uh, this is my little cheat sheet that I always keep. You guys can't see it. Oh, I began to focus. Now see, you can see your, I don't know if you can really see it. Maybe there, but it's not focusing well. But, uh, maybe there, I don't know. It's just that the light from the flash is not gonna let you guys see it. But that's my little cheat sheet. And what do I have here? I have uh, MRSA, which is SARM in Spanish, VRE, which is ERB in Spanish, staff, RSV, jejunum, orthotics. Now, this is my little cheat sheet that I've had. This is, and I recommend you guys make one like this for like really uh, hard things that you know are gonna come up, but you will not remember. Like, and this is the only cheat sheet that I have. Um, everything else I'm pretty sure like I can't remember or I, I'm pretty sure that I'll remember it, but these are just the ones that get me all the time because, for example, MRSA, you have to say it, Staphylococcus aureoresistente a la meticilina. So just remembering that is just too much. I know I'm not gonna do it. So I have my little cheat sheet there and I recommend that you guys do it as well. Have a little uh, post-it note or whatever, whatever helps you to have your little cheat sheet there. And in case it just comes up, you don't even have to look it up because it's already there, right? So I would recommend, I probably wouldn't recommend writing CRE bacteria down. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll remember that she, that thing. <laughs> Almost slipped out, didn't it? I'm pretty sure that I'll remember that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this, this little sticky note, this is like the greatest tool for an interpreter. That will get you out of a rut quickly. And... It's gonna be different for everyone. I just have those things because in my particular case, I don't remember those things, but you can have anything, anything that you want in there. And I recommend that you guys do have one and it'll help you remember your vocabulary words much, much better. All right, so um, what happened today? That was the first highlight. And a second highlight is that today I was exposed to a old gentleman's penis. That's right. So the doctor said, um, they were uh, looking at his testicles and the doctor said that he was gonna point the camera away so the gentleman could undress and he sh should check his testicles. And then everything went fine. I thanked the doctor, I told him, thank you doctor. And everything went well until it was time that the gentleman had to put his pants back on. So the doctor thought the gentleman was finished and everything and then he put the camera towards the gentleman and then the gentleman was completely exposed. And then the doctor said, oh, you're not ready, I'm sorry. And then he turned the back and then he said, sorry, interpreter. And of course, my eyes were forever scarred. And I said, don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to see the world in the same light again, right? So yeah, that happens. I just wanted to tell you guys because anything can happen, right? And for the last highlight is something that it has nothing to do with it. Well, it has nothing to do with interpreting per like interpreting, but it does have to do something to do with the interpreting role. And uh, this is a very strange situation or very particular, I should say, strange as well. But I think particular is a good adjective for this one. So let me tell you what happened. So. Um, I had to interpret for a lady and as she, as soon as she walked in, she walked in into the front of the screen, I could say that there was something wrong with her. Like her hair was completely puffed up and uh, I don't know, for some reason she just struck me as odd, like 
a very odd person. So they found this lady wandering all around in the street and then they got her to the hospital and then they had me there uh, interpreting just to see what was going on, why the lady was there, why, who could we call, if she was lost, whatever. So they had us, uh, they had me um, do all of this question, interpret all of this question for her, right? So uh, just to tell you the gist of it, she, her answer were that she was rich, her son was greater than God, that she was a killer and she was a bad mama jama like just basically that's the idea that this gave me this gave me that this lady gave me and gave to the medical professionals right that were assessing her mental health and um she even told the gentleman that she liked them the the nurse that was there because it was a nurse and then it was some mental health providers and there were some other people that I didn't get to see, but they were behind. Like I got to see a little bit when the call was over uh, and I'll explain how come I got to see that. But um, this lady was, it's not, my say to say, it's not my place to say crazy, but in my opinion, she was, all right? And so, one of the things that happened is that right at the beginning, um, of course, I was smiling and laughing at the things that she was saying, right? I can't help it. I'm human. Uh, and so was everybody else. But something that I noticed is that she got very, very, very upset when she noticed that the other providers were laughing at her from my renditions, right? Because they were like so out of this world, right? They were outrageous. So it's normal for someone to laugh, right? So she started to get very upset and I noticed this and then this lady said that um, I was the only one that she could trust, that she saw that I was a trustworthy person and that I was the only one that she could trust. So um, I picked up on that, like whenever she saw the other people laughing, she just like lost it, like went completely bonkers, like uh, issuing death threats and stuff like that. So this is the process that went into my mind. All right, if I start laughing and if I start smiling, this lady is going to have it against me, right? She's not even gonna wanna speak to the interpreter, right? Uh, because she's gonna say that she can't trust me. So I'm going to completely blow her trust and this assignment is gonna get bad and I'm not gonna be able to get any good answers from her so that they can further evaluate on her mental health. So what did I decide to do at that moment? I just decided to not laugh, to not laugh or smile at everything the lady was telling me. Everything that she said, I just uh, completely told the, the providers with a straight face. And uh, whenever I was hearing everything she was saying, I kept a straight face, I kept it professional because I didn't want to lose her trust, right? And for her to go completely bad and then they wouldn't be able to get anything out of her, right? They were already struggling with her in the beginning. So that's what I did and everything went well and uh, the lady turned out uh, to be awesome. She even offered to take me for some drinks later on. Uh, she was like, when I told her goodbye and everything, she was like, oh, um, Remember that I'm gonna be taking you on later on. We're gonna go wherever you wanna go. So, hey, I had her trust and she even offered to buy me drinks. So what else does an interpreter want, right? So uh, when everything was over, uh, the providers had me, um, they took me over to the side away uh, from the lady and then two ladies and uh, the nurse asked me, um, well, thank you so much. And then they're like, we just wanna ask you something. How did you manage to keep a straight face through that whole session? And I just told them, I told them, uh, well, I noticed that she was getting very upset with all the laughing and smiling. And she said that she trusted me. So I just didn't wanna blow her trust. And I wanted to get the best answers for you guys. So I knew this was a trigger. This was gonna be bad for her. So I just did everything that I could to keep her professional and keep a straight face because I know if not, everything that would have come out of this lady's mouth would have been just anger. And then the, prof the, the providers were like, oh, well, thank you so much for that great job. And um, I, 
I really like that. I mean, uh, that they were able to notice that, that I was doing that. And in the end, they asked how come I did it and how I did it right. And I was able to explain to that. And they were grateful for that. So, yay me, right? Blowing my own horn. <laughs> All right. So, now let's get to the good part today. Oh, yeah. And I forgot to let you guys know that for the CRE bacteria, that definition was from the mayoclinic.org. All right and now for the depression screening vocabulary uh, and now let me tell you guys this is not like the vocabulary uh like the other vocabulary sessions um what i'm gonna do here is there's some tricky words in um depression screening or tricky for me since they are tricky for me i'm pretty sure that someone else another english spanish interpreter or any interpreter is going to find some of this tricky to interpret as well so i decided to do a video about it and uh, this is probably going to be pretty simple vocabulary easy vocabulary for a lot of people and for some of us it's a little tricky right not that it's difficult not that we've never ever heard this uh, vocabulary but just i couldn't make like the connection right to actually give a good interpretation the first time that i had a depression screening so i thought i decided that i share this with you that way they don't catch you off guard and um before we continue i would like for you guys i've dropped the link here of a depression screening questionnaire which i would like for you guys to go ahead i'm going to give you a little moment so that way you can go ahead look down there go ahead and um, have the depression screening questionnaire right in front of you while you are following this video and it'll make it much much easier to go ahead and follow this video and besides that i would suggest you learn you learn every question that is on the screening because they screen at a lot of times. I've had to screen at an um, at emergency room. I had to screen at just um, a physical checkup. I've had to do depression screenings at all kinds of things. Not Even if people don't go in there because they're depressed or anything, they just go in because they have a cut in their finger, they will give them a depression screening. So this is something that is going to be coming up all the time, but it's the same all the time. So once you already have it down, guess what? You got it and you won't have to struggle with it ever again. So my gift to you. All right, so I hope that I was talking a lot. I hope that you guys already have downloaded that or you have that website right in front of you. All right, if not, do it right now. Pause this video right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right or not do whatever you want okay uh so let's get started so depression screening now why am i including depression screening here because that's a tricky one for me um i didn't know how to say screening uh depression screening and i had to look it up i had to look it up and then i had to use this my nogging right i had to look it up and i had to see like how would i say this so i came up with prueba de detección para la depresión or cuestionario de depresión both mean the same thing you can use them interchangeably if you can think of something better go ahead and drop it in the comments i would like to know maybe that's something better and i will adopt that and i will forever love you and be thankful so what is a depression screening? This definition is from medlineplus.gov and a depression screening, also called a depression test, helps find out if you have depression. Depression is a common though serious illness. Everyone feels sad at times, but depression is different than normal sadness or grief. Depression can affect how you think, feel, and behave. Depression makes it hard to function at home and work. You may lose interest in activities you once enjoyed. Some people with depression feel worthless and are at risk for harming themselves. All right, so that is a depression screening. It's just pretty much a little questionnaire, a little test that they do at a doctor's office just to make sure that you don't have any underlying depression, right? Or 
um, yeah, that's just to make sure that you're not having any depression. In case that you do happen to get a high score on the test, then they will suggest to speak to a counselor. They will arrange things for you. Uh, but of course, uh, they will ask you if you want to do all of that. They're not going to force anything of you on you. So uh, that's just uh, pretty much it. And I think it's good practice, right? You go into the doctor, they do a depression screening pass it great don't pass it then they give you the help that you need right it's an awesome tool very easy to use just questions so all right so before we get started um as you can see in if you guys have the website in front of you if not i've, I've already given up on you i know you're not gonna get that website in front of you but it to those of you that do have it thank you for that and one of the answers um, that you're gonna ask for, that you're gonna get for every question is not at all, several days, or let me um, not at all, several days, more than half the days or nearly every day. Now, whenever they mention this, this is what I do. Those are my notes. Not at all, several days, more than half the days or nearly every day. That's what I put down for the answers. And then whenever I get an answer, I just mark it, like up here. Like for example, if the answer to question one was uh, this, I just mark this. And then I just continue making little marks along the way. That way I can distinguish and I know which answer was given, right? Or just draw like a little line to the from the question to the answer that you have in your notes, right? And that helps, that really helps um to save you the time right instead of uh answering that at all and then they will always ask that not at all several so instead of writing that down you write it down once and you are done with it so that might help a lot of you i know it definitely helps me all right so let me get to the questions and i will give you the interpretation i'm not gonna write down uh, um those questions or the interpretations uh, or the translations I should say because they are too long and I got out uh, half an hour after my usual time so I am running late right now so I just don't have the time to do it sorry guys but um, pretty easy questions and you have that paper in front of you I hope All right or that website in front of you alright so uh, first question, do you feel sorry or regret about something? Now, the tricky word here is regret, right? Not a lot, well, for me, um, that was a tricky word for me. Uh, or feel sorry, right? So, because I never feel sorry and I never regret anything. Psychopath, baby. Oh, sorry, just a little joke right there. <laughs> I just remembered uh, the definition from, what was it, uh, Thursday, last Thursday, right? All right, so uh, the translation for this is lamenta, feel sorry, o se arrepiente, regret de algo. Lamenta o se arrepiente de algo. Do you feel sorry or regret something? Lamenta o se arrepiente de algo. And then the next question is, do you feel responsible or guilty about it? So guilty, right? Uh, that is a tough. That was a tough one for me. And se siente responsable o culpable por eso, right? Se siente responsable o culpable por eso. Do you feel responsible or guilty about it? All right. And for the next question, do you feel down, depressed, or hopeless? All right. Now, before I give you that translation, I'm gonna give you a, a moment to think about how would you say, do you feel down? Um, that was a really, really tough one for me. Um, so, how do I say it? Se siente con bajo estado de ánimo, depresión o sin esperanza. So, bajo estado de ánimo is, do you feel down? And hopeless, sin esperanza. All right? And for the next question, do you feel that you have let yourself down or others or that you are a failure? Failure, that still gets me every time. I don't know why. Like... I have that erased from my mind. Failure. There is no, uh, failure is not an option, right? So it's not in this noggin. <laughs> I mean, I can't think why I can't remember failure, um, but I can't. So uh, 
siente que se ha defraudado a usted o a los demás y que es un fracaso, fracaso, failure. Do you feel that you have let yourself down or others or that you are a failure? Siente que se ha defraudado a usted o a los demás y que es un fracaso. So failure, fracaso, failure, fracaso. That is one that never ever sticks. And sometimes I have to even look it up in English. How embarrassing, huh? But I don't know. Maybe I should write that in the sticky note. Maybe that'll help me. <laughs> All right. Uh, for the next question, do you feel restless or anxious? Now, this would be, ¿se siente inquieto o ansioso? Okay. Uh, that is pretty easy, right? Restless, inquieto. That was easy for me. I had to look restless up the first time that I had it. But now I remember it. All right. And the next one. Have you thought recently that maybe the life is not worth it? Have you thought recently that maybe your life is not worth it? ¿Ha pensado recientemente que tal vez la vida no vale la pena? Vale la pena. Worth it. Vale la pena. Remember that one. Um, and that, 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 that. That's a term that I don't, I don't like using, vale la pena, because if you, well, it's worth it, but if you actually go ahead and, like, translate it, yeah, like, literally, it's like, is it worth the shame? Is it worth the, the shame? Yeah, there's another translation that I have on the tip of my, on the tick, on the tip of my tongue, but I'm, it's not coming out. I don't, I don't know why. I forgot my English like the lady last week. Uh, so yeah, it's like, um, is it worth like the embarrassment? Is it worth the, yeah, let's just say embarrassment. So um, that's why I don't like using it, that phrase, but it's perfectly good to use in Spanish. Vale la pena. All right, and it's what is used. Um, vale el esfuerzo, vale, vale otra cosa más valiosa, no la pena. All right, uh, all right, moving or speaking so slowly that others could have noticed, or the opposite, being so fidgety or restless that you have been moving around a lot or more than usual. Now, fidgety, that's a tricky word for me, and of course, they have fidgety with restless, which fidgety, I would interpret as, um, I have it right here, <laughs> inquieto. So, inquieto is what I use for restless. So, when this came up, I was like, what, what am I to say? So, I just said inquieto. I just said, uh, moverse o hablar tan lento que los demás lo hayan notado o lo contrario, estar tan inquieto que se esté moviendo más de los demás. I think that just gets the idea true, right? But... In my mind, it doesn't feel right because I'm living out a word, either fidgety or like restless. So, what did I come up with? Moverse o hablar tan lento que los demás lo hayan notado. O lo contrario, estar tan inquieto o intranquilo que se esté moviendo más de los demás. So, inquieto, intranquilo, just pretty much mean the same thing, but... I mean, we're not supposed to leave anything out or add stuff, right? So... This translation makes me feel more at ease. All right, and that is going to be pretty much it for me today, guys. I hope that this was helpful for some of you, and if it didn't help you guys much at all, then I'm sorry, but at least it's gonna help some of you, and I thought that um, it'll be good for you guys to actually have that questionnaire, right? The ones that you should have in front of your computer, in front of your screen. Um, because this is something that, uh, like I told you, is going to keep them coming up. It's going to keep them coming up. This is going to be something that uh, you're going to do about five of those a week, at least. All right. So hopefully it helps some of you. So please leave your questions on the comments and I will answer some of them on the next session. Remember that if anything is time sensitive, let me know. That way I can get to that question right away. Remember, I'll be, I'll be here every Monday through Friday after work. And also remember that we have a Patreon page for as little as $1 of your support. You help to motivate us to create much more content and you have access to everything on that page. 
medical practice videos free of those annoying ads scripts answer sheets vocabulary lists and much more content and most importantly you will forever win a place inside of our heart so we love you to all of our patreons we love you to everyone that has bought us a coffee we love all of our subscribers i'm gonna put this so you can see me in the little heart right there we love everyone that is watching this video right now and can see my face right here in this little lovely heart right and of course we love you that's right all right <laughs> so Thank you so much for why oh and remember will you be my 100 so thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't done so for much more content and don't forget to share happy interpreting goodbye if you like this video don't forget to smash that like button also share this video with other beginner interpreters or anyone who can benefit from this information Thank you all so much for all the support you guys have given us. This means the world to us. Don't forget, we also have social media. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. We also have an Instagram and the one I love the most, TikTok. We just recently got a buying a coffee and also, if you guys didn't already know, we do have a Patreon account. If you guys would like to support us a little more, we'd love to have you guys over there. And as always, I will be posting all the links to these pages down below in the description box. Thanks for watching!